Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you how to deploy .NET Core applications into Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service and using AWS Fargate. This approach allows you to run your application in serverless containers, orchestrated by Amazon EKS. What you see here is the high-level architecture of what we want to do. The developer uses Visual Studio to upload the application image into a registry in Amazon ECR. Then we need an Amazon EKS cluster, either an existing cluster or a new one for this application. We'll create a service and deployment in Kubernetes, which runs three replicas of our containerized .NET application in three different availability zones. Finally, in order to enable access to the running application containers, we need an application load balancer. So let's go and see how that works in action. In order to deploy a .NET application on EKS with Fargate, first we need an application. So here I have a .NET application in Visual Studio. If I run this ASP.NET application locally using iOS Express, this is what the application looks like. It's currently running locally and on iOS Express. Now I'm going to add Docker support to my ASP.NET application. I'm going to choose Linux containers. Visual Studio has added a Docker file to my project. If I open that, this is what it looks like. Now I can change the runtime to Docker. Visual Studio is using Docker Desktop to run my application locally. Now here's the Docker image ID. This is my application running on .NET Core 3.2. And as you can see, it's created a Docker image based on .NET Core 3.1. Now here's my application again running locally, but this time it's running inside Docker. Now I have the application and it's containerized, but now I need to deploy it on AWS. So I'll choose Publish Container to AWS from Visual Studio. There are a number of options here. I'll select the latest as my tag for the application. And from the deployment target, I'll choose Publish Only to Docker Image. Now the AWS plugin for Visual Studio has created an image inside Amazon ECR. And here's my image. This is the Docker image of my application uploaded into Amazon ECR. Next step is to create an EKS cluster. So first I'll check uh, whether EKS CTL tool is installed. If it's not installed, you can uh, follow the instructions provided in this page. And I'll use this command EKS CTL, create cluster to create a new cluster in my AWS account. The cluster is already available because I had created it before. And here is the cluster, that's the cluster name, my Fargate cluster, inside Amazon EKS. The next step is to create a namespace. So I'm creating, using this command, kubectl create namespace, EKS Fargate app, to create a namespace inside my cluster. And then EKS CTL create Fargate profile to create a profile for my application. And of course, the profile already exists. That's why it's showing this message. If it doesn't exist, uh, it creates it for you. The commands are safe if, if the profile or the cluster already exists. If you re-execute the command, uh, it doesn't do any harm. I also need the YAML description of my service and deployment. This is what it looks like. It's a YAML file, including the description of my service, uh, the deployment, 
uh, what applications, how many pods, and uh, what image to use uh, for the application. So I'm calling uh, the application as my app and uh, using this container definition with the image URI that refers to the ECR image that we uploaded earlier from Visual Studio. Now let's check the URI of the application image in ECR. This is where it is. I'm copying it. And I'll replace the string with the URI of my ECR image. I'll save the file. I'll change the directory to where the ML file is stored. Now I can execute kubectl apply dash f, meaning the file, the YAML file, with the address of my YAML file with service description. After executing that, I can see all the pods running, uh, running in my cluster inside the namespace EKS Fargate app. And as you can see, there are three containers pending to be created because I defined my application with three replicas. Now let's check get pod. And here it is again. You can see all three pods are now running inside my cluster. Now the application is up and running. I also need an application load balancer to access those uh, containers. Otherwise, I won't be able to test whether the application is working or not. To create application load balancer, I have to go through a number of steps. First, I have to make sure that the subnets where I want the application load balancer to be deployed, have these tags applied to them. Navigating to my VPC inside AWS console, the VPC console subnets, and here it is, the list of subnets in my VPC. If I check these subnets, I can see the tags. This subnet does not have the tags. This one is part of my cluster. This one is part of my cluster and also has uh, the tags required for the application load balancer ingress. The next step to create the application load balancer ingress is creating an IAM OIDC OpenID Connect role. This is the command required for that using EKS CTL tool. And after that, I have to download an IAM policy for the ALB ingress controller. Just copy and paste this command and execute it here. It's going to download the file in the current directory. Now I have to create the policy. AWS IAM create policy. You could also use the PowerShell commandlet. And now I have to apply the RBAC role to my cluster. Now I have to create an IAM role for the ALB ingress controller and attach it to the service account created in the previous step. Make sure all, all the parameters are correct and then deploy the application load balancer ingress controller with the following command. Now I have to edit the controller using this command, kubectl edit deployment. opens it in notepad I'm searching for the line where containers are defined and I have to add three additional arguments the cluster name the VPC ID because I'm deploying in a custom VPC I have to provide the VPC ID here. This is the ID of my VPC and also the region. I'm deploying to AP Southeast 2 region. I'll save the file and close it. Now if I check the pods in cube system namespace, I can see the ALB ingress controller is running as a pod inside there.
And here is the definition for my ingress controller. It's again a YAML file. The name and namespace of the ingress controller and the application to uh, redirect to containers at the back end. So I have all of these in my YAML file and I'll simply apply that to my uh, cluster. And here it is when I execute kubectl get the ingress controller, I can get the URL of my application load balancer. Now if I browse to the URL provided over there, I can see my application finally up and running. Thank you.